Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Every it's morning about 4 o'clock, I come to my office here. This is a small RV that my wife and, have, and I have had for a long time. And she comes out with me a lot of times every morning and brings coffee. And we have a piece of toast. And, and, and we do our Bible. So what you see here is a small RV that I use for my office. Um, I thought maybe this morning, and I'm not going to make these videos every day, but there's a lot of things, or a few things, that are on my heart. And I want to share these with you because as Christians, we, each of us, has a responsibility to share what we know about God with other people, with those people that don't know. You know, believe it or not, people that don't know about God are interested. They really want to hear. And so you don't have to have a doctorate in theology or be a famous preacher to share what you know as a Christian. Our responsibility is to just spread the gospel. You know, Scripture says, a righteous man that turns away will not be saved. An evil, evil man that turns to God will be saved. I mean, it's simple. In our oh, life, yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's, uh, that's Isaiah 64. That's Isaiah 64, that, that is also Ezekiel 33. Therefore, son of man, say to your people, if someone who is righteous disobeys, that person's former righteousness will count for nothing. And if someone who is wicked repents, that person's former wickedness will not bring condemnation. If I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, but they turn away from their sin and do what is just and right. If they give back what they took and pledge for a loan, return what they have stolen, follow the decrees that give life and do no evil, that person will surely live. They will not die. If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, Evil, they will die for it. Isaiah 64, all of us have become like one who is unclean and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags to God. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. So uh, yeah, God is calling you a fool in the Bible if you say there's no God. They're corrupt, their deeds are vile, there's no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away, all have become corrupt, there's no one who does good, not even one. I mean, it's simple. In our life, each one of us must at some point make the decision whether or not we're going to believe in Jesus. Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. I believe in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. People everywhere believe in a creator of some kind. The Aborigine of America, the American Indian, believed in it. And, and so... You know, like, even atheists, even atheists believe... <laughs> That's why they go into all these uh, the aliens and UFOs and stuff like that, because we know there's a 0% chance evolution is true. There's zero evidence for it. It's just lies on top of lies on top of lies just to get away from the true God who is Jesus and, Christ, and so, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you see, it's a simple choice. It's a simple choice to, to say, I'm a Christian, to say... Jesus Christ died for your sins. You don't have to stand on a street corner and beat a Bible. You just have to, through love and through caring for your fellow man, share what you know. One of the greatest preachers I have ever heard, and I didn't know this man personally, was Lester Summerall. He was a common man. He was a plain spoken man. He was a down to earth man, and he was a no nonsense man. But he was a believer. And he would tell the truth no matter what. And I had tremendous respect for him, and I've never forgotten. But I just wanted to come to you this morning and, and say if you're a believer, share what you know. If you're not a believer and are looking at me and listening to my voice, I'm telling you now that Jesus Christ is real. I'm telling you now that Jesus Christ died on the scene, on a cross for your sins. I'm telling you now that Moses took a staff and tapped the waters and God separated him and Israel walked right on through and the armies of Egypt were destroyed. Amen. I'm telling you now that the book, that God's book, the Holy Bible is true and I don't care whether it's the NIV, American Standard, King James Version or whose version it is. If it's God's word, <laughs> it's accurate, it's true. If it's accurate, yeah, some some versions are really, really weird, but yeah. You know, as time goes on, you know, the more and more people are going to be hated for telling the truth, the simple, obvious, objective fact, which is that Jesus is God. And if you do not admit to that simple fact, then you are in huge danger. Matthew 11 verse 25 says, though, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. So you can talk to an atheist and then they'll just say like, oh yeah, virgin birth, that's impossible. I don't believe in any of that stuff. And then it's like, well, I do because it's true. <laughs> My God can do stuff that you don't think he can. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like, And at the end of the day, when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. If you think the Bible is foolish, you are dying and are destined for destruction. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God because it is true. Or it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the understanding of those who have understanding I will confound. Where is the wise person? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? God was pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. So yeah, when we look at stuff like uh, the virgin birth and all these unbelievable things that happen in the bible uh that's the point they're meant to be unbelievable <laughs> like god has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and god has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong see so, yeah, everything that's in the bible is just completely backwards from what you've been taught your entire life most likely when you're weak you're strong and when you're strong you are weak when you're wise you're fool and when you're a fool you're wise just as it is written let the one who boasts boasts in the lord so that is what 
I do on this channel every day. I am proud of him and his ultimate plan, right? Like it's just, just watching the way it unfolds in our lives today. It's like, it's beautiful to watch, honestly. The captives will be released and the blind will see and the oppressed will be set free.